Uh, this is Derek Wolverton, and this is my journey learning Julia for linear algebra, its highs and its lows. Every couple of years, I decide it's time to add another language to my belt. And what I've found over the years is it's better to look in a new domain at new problems and the languages that service them. Otherwise, you tend to get unfavorable comparisons between the overlaps between the old languages and the new languages and takes the air out of your sails for why learn a new language when you already have an old language that'll do the job. So this time around I decided to look into computational fluid dynamics which is uh, being overrun by machine learning and reached out to the YouTube for resources and found wonderful lectures from Professor Button at University of Washington who both presents on modern topics of research as well as introductory material and he went to my alma mater that's alma mater computers so I started going through his 301 beginning scientific computing class uh, and everything here looked great except for MATLAB which I do not have and do not want to have so I did some searching for alternatives, and besides the usual suspects, I found Julia, this new language that everyone was raving about. So let's give that sucker a try. So initially I installed the Windows application and found out that was a disaster due to the ocean of files that it creates and the fact that Windows wants to scan every single one of them with a virus checker. So I fell back to using Linux in Windows through the new WSL2 and got that up and running. But now I have a non-native environment for displaying, so I need an HTML type uh, notebook, which used to be Jupyter, but now the latest thing saying is Pluto. So I'm fine living within a few blocks of the bleeding edge. Let's try it out. Oh, plots look pretty cool and pretty easy to do. Uh, could do some tech. I thought somebody used to do a lot of tech in the 80s. You can even access web devices, uh, like the code I found uh, from another programmer to capture audio box and then cause an update to the notebook, which then pushed the data to Julio, which rendered the waveform, did a Fourier transform, and rendered the spectrum at a fast enough frame rate that it felt interactive. Uh, and looked into this, the performance of this, uh, decided to use root mean square as a sort of a candidate for benchmarking. Tried to assemble some um, versions from existing pieces based on suggestions on the web uh, with some better, some less success. Wrote my own code uh, with a little sprinkling of magical pixie macros uh, from an introductory tutorial and then wrote two versions of the C code, one in classic uh, Fortran style, which is what they seem to teach at universities days, and the other in high performance style based on my years writing ray tracers. As you can see, some of the methods suggested on the web are poor. Uh, the Julia function seems to be even the, the best uh, assemb assemblies but not by a, a huge amount. More interestingly is that the two versions of the C code bracket the Julia function very tightly so that the Fortran style is just a little bit slower. So if you had a novice or journeyman C programmer uh, and you went up against them with a Julia function, you'd have a good chance of actually beating them in the benchmark. But that my high performance version has just enough tricks still in it that it edges out against Julia by just a hair. So perhaps uh, some uh, Julia internal people will incorporate my, all my tricks and make Julia just as fast as the best C that even someone as crazy as I could write. Unfortunately, in other areas, I had much less success. Um, I constantly wrestled with trying to take the data from the computations. I was building following the lectures and then try to 
grappled it into a shape that plot would take, trying any and all means I could come across, which I'm sure all of these uh, approaches are horrible. But even more so is the interactivity in the MATLAB lectures at the end, towards the end of the semester. I, we're not, I was not able to match with my understanding of Julia because right now in HTML notebooks, the JavaScript drives all interaction. And so there's no opportunity for Julia to push data into um, into JavaScript and get it to react to the Julia. Perhaps there will be some changes to the infrastructure so that can come about at a later time. But in all in all, I think Julia is a very powerful language already. Uh, the HTML interaction is a very um, rich environment to work in, and I look forward to seeing where Julia goes. If you want to see the rest of my horrible Julia code for the the course, it's available on GitHub. Otherwise, thank you for listening. <laughs>